I am back to work. Well, I'm off heading back to work. I've been on vacation for the last two weeks. Didn't really um, do anything special. My plan was to go hang out down Orlando, but that uh, fell through. I could have went, but I didn't want to go by myself, so. Oh well, that's another story. But, uh, two weeks it up. So, I had expected that, okay, vacation's over, so now I'll be uh, going back to the regular 10 hour grind. So, because uh, I work four 10 hour days. So, I'll be back to the regular grind, and uh, that'll be that. But I get a phone call from the supervisor on Thursday, last Thursday, saying, asking if I was interested in a temporary position. It's called a SME position. S-M-E position. Uh, basically what that position is is that being that I work in a call center, of course there's there's a high enough turnover where every so many weeks there's a new training class starting might be every couple months or whatever but it's a new training class starting so what they do is they take a couple of the more experienced representatives or people who have uh, shown that they are proficient at doing their job or exhibit leadership qualities or skills and they take one of those agents and they put them in the new class with the new hires and the whole purpose of them being in that class is to assist the training instructor or facilitator for that new class with training the, with training the new hires. Tra help train the new hires, you answer questions, you basically you facilitate the facilitator on uh, training the new hires. So it's a it's a position that you have to apply for, you go through a little mini interview, your your metrics has to be right and all the rest of that. Um, so before I went on vacation, um, I applied for it when I became available, and I did it for a couple weeks on the floor, meaning that uh, when the new hires get out of training class, they're put into they're put up on the floor on this on the sales floor of all the rest of the agents who've been there, but they're kind of kept aside because of course they're still gonna be brand new. They're still asking a lot of questions or anything like that, and so. They take a bunch of uh, agents, seasoned agents, to be SMEs for the new people on the floor to answer their questions and help them navigate in um, the different programs and stuff like that. So I did that for a couple weeks and apparently I did well enough that I made an impression with that. So when they called me on Thursday, I guess there was a last minute change. I guess they had already set aside an agent to be the SME. SME for the new class is just starting up today uh, but for whatever reason at the last minute that person was no longer available for whatever reason that I was not uh, told so they offered me the spot so of course I jump on that because um, a um, I don't like being on the phone all day for pretty much nine hours a day to get an hour lunch or eight and a half hours a day because you get two 15 minute breaks along with that. I don't like doing it. I do it because it's the job. It pays the bills. But I don't wake up in the morning going, Woo, can't wait to get on the phone and sell stuff. So, of course, I jumped on that. And last time I did that, I enjoyed myself enough that you know I was willing to do it again. It's a nice break. It's uh, get your name out there. 
especially if you do a good job. <clears throat> and it's more focused on what I like doing, which is facilitating and, and stuff like that. So that's the uh, position. So normally today I would work 10 to 8.30, uh, but I'm going in early today because while you are in this position, you take on the same schedule that the new hires take. So the new hires, for the first month or so, or two months or however long it is, their schedule will be 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So being that uh, I'm gonna be the teacher's helper for that time period, then uh, I'm gonna be working that shift, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And it's Monday through Friday, which I really can't complain about because this is it's Monday through Friday, of course. And, you know, that's that. Normally I work Monday through Thursday uh, four 10 hour days, but it's just gonna be a regular nine to five. So, that is gonna be that. And then afterwards, when they get up on the floor, after their classroom training is, is completed and they begin the phase of the on the job training, of actually being on the sales floor, doing their job, talking to real customers. Um, they'll probably be working the late shift, like three to nine or whatever time their late shift begins. So I'll be working that shift along with them. So on average, I believe training class lasts about three months maybe. I'll find out the details once I get there. It's been a long time since I've been in training class. But I believe it's about three months total maybe so that's what I'll be doing for the next three months so the goal of all this is that I want to vlog about it I think I want to make a daily vlog of my experience with it you know whatever challenges come up or whatever accomplishments happen or anything about it just to document some insight into the day-to-day -day routine of this position and I will be posting them on my page my YouTube page so everybody can see so that is what I'm what my plans are. So right now I am driving to work. Very basic drive, nothing special going on here. So that is that. Now how do I feel about this position? Well, like I said, I'm not a fan of my current position as in sales and all the rest of that. I mean, it's okay. I, I do the job. Apparently, I do the job well enough. <clears throat> but I don't have a sense of accomplishment from it. I feel like I should be doing more in life. and But for the time being, this pays the bills. So, doing this SME position for the next three months is definitely going to be stepping out of the comfort zone because it has a lot of opportunity with it simply because, you know, everybody in the class, class is usually about 20 people, 18 to 20 people. And you're gonna be with them from start to finish. And it's out of my comfort zone, reason being because I'm pretty much a key to myself, quiet at work, say hi to the people I said to say hi to. I've been there for five years, so it took time to develop, you know, I don't call anybody a work or friend, but work relationships where I speak to somebody on a regular basis, you know, but for the most part, I keep to myself, just do my job, get out the building, and when I'm outside the building, I'm not even thinking about working to the following day. So, and I'm not Mr. Happy-Go-Lucky, super-duper outgoing all the rest of them, or more of a introvert type person, 
where I prefer to have maybe one or two good friends and call it a day. So in this position, I may be called upon to lead a class in a subject or do a training uh, on a certain thing. I'll have to be outgoing and personable and speak to all the different people in the classroom on a regular basis, developing relationships with them. You know, of course you gotta provide information that's accurate and everything like that, but you also have to be, you know, usually they want, they go for people who are kinda, you know, outgoing and everything like that, and I'm more reserved. And because I'm more reserved, I usually have a pretty straight face like the face you see on my grill right now, that's my everyday face. So some people always uh, misinterpret that to mean, oh, he's mad or he's this or he's that. And actually I'm not. Uh, most of the time I spend is um, rather neutral most of the time. Or I'm mildly irritated about stuff I see on a regular basis. And then sometimes, you know, I'm actually having a decent time. But usually when I'm at work, um, my emotional state ranges from neutral to mildly irritated. <laughs> but you have to put all that aside and I have to be upbeat and pleasant while at work. <laughs> Which which like I said is outside of my comfort zone but if you want to grow in life you have to get outside your comfort zone and I think at the end of this experience I will be better for it simply because you know it's, it's outside the comfort zone and it's also a chance to meet new people and all the rest of that blah 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 that goes along with that and if I do a well enough job then of course it will put me on the radar for other things that may come up. So it's one of those things where you have to make an opportunity for yourself or take advantage of an opportunity when presented to you even though it's not something that <clears throat> is within your comfort zone. So in the long run this is better for me. In the short run I'm not on the phone for 10 hours a day trying to sell stuff so either way I look at it, it's kind of a win-win situation there I'm still working Monday through Friday for the next couple of months there uh, I'm not stuck with a phone stuck to my head and I get to be around brand new people who are going to be looking to me and the rest of the leadership to, you know, set the example and answer questions and things like that. I'm more suited for <clears throat> leadership than I am to be a drone. I don't want to be at the top of the food chain, but I want to be somewhere in the food chain <clears throat> and not just a regular drone where you just come in and you follow a script and blah 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 so but I am three quarters of the way <coughs> to work I'm gonna stop off at the gate gas station pick me up some snacks because trust me the first day <coughs> of training is always a boring day because you're sitting there through orientation blah 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 and I want some bubble gum to chew on something to somewhat distract me from the whatever so hopefully the uh, next update will either be on my lunch break or at the end of the day and I'll have some juicy and interesting things for you until then signing out Eight hours later. Well, today is done. Day one in the new prison.
position or a temporary position. It is 6 p.m. Usually I don't get out of work to 8.30 p.m. So this is a nice change. I might actually uh, rejoin the gym again and uh, get some exercise on in my extra free time. So, uh, give a breakdown. The good and the bad of day one. Uh, here's the good. I'm parked I'm at the stoplight. Next to me is a Bentley. Oh well. Anyway. Total in the new hires was about 34 people. And that's divided up into two classes. And there's two of us SMEs for the group of 34. So I get one class and the other rep gets the other class. And uh, for the most part, it was just all the HR stuff, code of conduct, attendance, all the stuff that you have to get out of the way the first day in your job uh, orientation. Um, so wasn't much to that. Everybody kind of just asked questions or anything like that. I pretty much got to sit in the back of the room and just kind of observe and everything like that. I was asked a few questions um, just to give my input, but for the most part, it wasn't anything that was really required on my part because, you know, HR and all the other people have come in and introduced themselves and the whole chain of command have to come through and introduce themselves to the new hire group. So that's what that was. So I uh, got a very diverse group of people uh, at this time around. And being that it's uh, Jacksonville, Florida, the majority of the people are minorities. You know, black primarily, uh, maybe some Hispanic, uh, and a couple white people. That's the breakdown in it. The company I work for is very diverse in its hiring practices, so you name it, we got it. Um, and everybody had to tell a little bit about themselves. And one thing I did notice, it's something I picked up a long time ago, but sometimes you learn things or you experience things and you forget about it as life goes on. And one thing I did notice you have a lot of different aspects to your personality and the larger circle that you are in or the more people you know such as in this group there's always going to be somebody who has some of the same interests or traits that you have so You might meet somebody that's totally outgoing, which is the opposite of what you are, but that person likes to read science fiction, just like you do. Or you might see somebody, and you think that they're one way, and they open their mouth up, and they're like, well, yeah, I'm usually pretty reserved. And, or you meet somebody else, and they're like, oh, I have a really dry sense of humor, you know, or, you know, and these are all people that you see and walk past every single day. And it's unfortunate that everybody thinks there's so much of an individual and so unique. When in actuality, we're not as unique as we think we are. You know, odds are the people that you walk past, see on a regular basis, you probably got, I'm not gonna say a lot in common, but you have enough in common. So we're so you spend so much time. I think we've just been socially conditioned to look at our differences and what's wrong with the other person and whose team on you're on. And we're so conditioned to be separated from each other that you know we totally miss out on a lot because if we take half of that effort we take in separating ourselves out from other people and flip it around to, you know, seeing what we have in common with each other, I think, at least this country or this town, 
would be a better place. So that was, that was one nice thing to actually see. And like I said, that comes from, you know, the hiring practices being very diverse and everything like that. It's like you're almost saying that um, the my, more diverse you are, the more you have in common. Or the more diverse that group is, when you start to communicate with each other, the more that group actually has in common. So, so it looks like it's going to be a pretty decent team. There's a couple people that I think may not make it to the end of training. Like, if you're in your orientation first day and you're slouching and acting like you're about to fall asleep and, you know, and all the rest of that, then yeah, a, that's, if you do that on the first day, imagine what you're going to be doing on the 23rd day when you're really comfortable with your environment. You might as well, you're going to bring a pillow to work. So, that person may not last, but we'll see what happens. You know, I don't, don't count the eggs until they hatch. So, we'll see what happens with that. <coughs> now, for the, that's the good. Uh, also, we finally got into, at the end of the day, we broke up the group. Like I said, it was a group of 34. So, we divided it up into the different classes and so tomorrow's when we actually gonna be the first day with the actual trainer and actually start doing the job and learn the job that's uh that's the good the bad so far there is no bad uh, it was a pretty straightforward easy day i'm not taking any phone calls um I get asked some questions here and there, you know. Um, now, I do know for a fact, based on some of the questions I asked, or I was asked of me, somebody's gonna ask me a question, and on the outside, I'm like, okay, yeah, uh, I'm gonna throw something out there, see what sticks, because I'm not gonna know the answer. Because on the inside, I'm thinking to myself, your guess is as good as mine. I only been here for so long, and half of that time period, I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> But of course you can't tell them that because you're the, uh, you're somebody who's supposed to know what you're talking about. Apparently I know enough to be picked for this program, but, um, you know, so it's going to keep me on my toes. I have to be on my game, keep up with all my emails and the latest changes and everything like that, because it's going to be expected that I know these answers when people ask me. I'm not expected to know everything. But I'm at least expected to know how to get them pointed in the right direction. Or at least come back and follow up with them with the answer. So. And then also, you know, another part of the position is keep your eyes and ears open. So you can pick up on things that the trainer or supervisor may miss. So that you can report back saying, okay, this is what I experienced. This is what I noticed and everything like that. So. But there's no, there's no bads in it. Like I said, it's only day one. Um, when you're in that training class, after so many weeks, yeah, you're going to get... Everything starts out great, but after a while, you're going to be stepping on each other's nerves. <laughs> there are going to be some people going to get totally on your nerves, and that's where the challenge comes in. So hopefully I'll be still doing these vlogs when that time comes. And uh, we'll see what I have to say then. So be sure that you stay tuned in each day for the latest update. And hopefully I will be posting these every day. But now, day is done. I'm not going to be thinking about work again until tomorrow morning. I'm going to go home, walk the dog, find something to eat. And who knows what comes up. So until then... Thanks for watching. Tune in out.